With the potential for CO2 to increase yields, there's a lot of products entering the marketplace that um, state that they generate CO2, but a lot of the methods out there that are cheaper tend to be a very inefficient CO2 generation method. So I want to cover just a little bit about uh, what areas you should be kind of of concern uh, if you're considering that adding CO2 is a great thing or something you want to add, what are some more efficient methods and what are some inefficient methods? So inefficient CO2 generation methods, those methods that do generate CO2, so they are um, potentially stating they're generating CO2, and they are. However, but the amount can be inconsistent and create variable conditions. Uh, typically, they're cheaper because you're not using a pressurized tank or a propane to burn for heat and not really a good way to regulate them. Um, there's a high variability to the conditions that they can create. Also, there can be a lack of consistency, which can help increase the odds of variable in the results. So even if you have success with one of these systems, replicating those um, successful results can be a, quite a challenge. These should only be considered if the grow space is small, um, and for example, be a small grow tent. And you're operating with the idea of something is better than nothing. So I want you to think that oh, if you get one of these systems, uh, typically fermentation could be an option here. Um, that they're going to yield kind of consistent results or they can be used in large operations. They're inefficient, but something is better than nothing. They might be worth consideration. Uh, some of those methods for CO2 generation include the active compost, fermentation using dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide, mixing baking soda and vinegar, and there's some other proprietary uh, um, products out there also. However, all of these are poorly regulated and only have a chance to work in very small spaces. Dry ice or solid CO2 you might think, oh, that's just perfect. Um, however, how hot and where it's being released and how much is being released, that can cause some issues. Active compost and fermentation, yes, it is releasing CO2, but based on the sugars you feed the microbes, based on the release, based on the mixing, a lot of these aren't regulated for day and night cycles. This is why I consider all these to be inefficient methods of generating CO2. Because while they do generate some carbon dioxide, um, I guess something is better than nothing. But if you're really looking at efficiencies, you might want to consider other options that are more precise. And while they may cost more initially, they will ensure more consistent results.